Well, good morning. I'm Pastor Brett Laszlo, and uh, I'm glad that you uh, tuned in this morning. Um, this week is our church's uh, week of prayer to start off the new year, and uh, we're actually following uh, the Assembly of God's um, week of prayer uh, uh, recommendation. We're actually a, a, a week off, but uh, that's okay. We're using uh, Dick Eastman's book, Awesome, Exploring the Nature and Names of Jesus. And I'm glad you joined us this morning, and uh, we're going to begin day three in just a moment. day is a is a great day with Jesus amen and uh, it's just uh, wonderful to wake up in the morning or even in the middle of the night which I I do often and uh, to just have the joy and peace and love of the Lord in our hearts and uh, today's uh, devotional day three is the beautiful Jesus and um, you know I just want to share uh uh, for a moment, uh, when Jesus uh, came into my heart and life, uh, it was like a dark pair of sunglasses was taken off my eyes, and uh, I walked out. It was, it was a, a summer day, and I walked outside, and I was looking at the clouds and the trees and the grass and just all creation around me, and I was just going, wow, wow, because I was seeing the beauty and, and just the, the majesty, the glory of the Lord shining through his creation. And I'm confident that that's why even people who don't yet know Jesus personally, they love being out in nature because God's beauty is, uh, is shining through and they're, they're enjoying that. But what a blessing uh, to know the Lord personally, amen? And uh, to know uh, people worship the creation at times, but... How much better to, to worship the creator, the one who made this beautiful creation. But day three, the beautiful Jesus, and I'm reading from Dick Eastman's book. Um, it's exploring the wonders of Christ's beauty. When you hear the voice of Jesus saying, come to me, pray that God would give you eyes to see Jesus as irresistibly true and beautiful. That was <clears throat> written by John Piper. <clears throat> Dick Eastman writes, Over the years, my life has been profoundly impacted by mighty giants of the faith whose lives have challenged me to pursue God in greater dimensions. One of those is Robert Murray McChaney, a Scottish preacher in the uh, mid-19th century who was passionately consumed with the beauty and wonder of Christ. Referencing Song of Solomon 5 in verse 16, McChaney introduces us to the beautiful Jesus. You will never find Jesus so precious as when the world is one vast howling wilderness. Then he is like a rose blooming in the midst of the desolation or a rock rising above the storm. Do not set your hearts on any of the flowers of this world. They shall all fade and die. Prize the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. 
Jesus never changes. Yes, he is altogether lovely. This is my beloved, and this is my friend. Praise the Lord. Dazzling radiance. Today we turn our attention to the wonders of Christ's beauty. How beautiful do you see Jesus right now? The Apostle Paul wrote to uh, Corinthian believers, Remember, our message is not about ourselves. We're proclaiming Jesus Christ, the master of uh, the master. All we are is messengers, errand runners from Jesus for you. It started when God said, light up the darkness, and our lives filled up with light as we saw and understood God in the face of Christ. All bright and beautiful. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, the message. And I need to silence my phone. I don't know if you're hearing that, but it's bothering me. I hope it hasn't been annoying you. And uh, I'm not as smooth and, and uh, um, accustomed to this as Pastor Keith, but uh, he's breaking me in here on this. <laughs> the author of Hebrews adds, The sun is the dazzling radiance of God's splendor. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. This beauty to the extreme. The psalmist likewise spoke about the beauty of the Lord. He wrote, For God is sheer beauty, all generous in love, loyal always and ever. How awesome. It's Psalm 100 and verse 5. Elsewhere he declared, For God is great and worth a thousand hallelujahs. His terrible beauty makes the gods look cheap. Royal splendor radiates from him. A powerful beauty sets him apart. That's Psalm uh, 96 and verse 4 uh, in the Message Translation. King David is one of his most memorable, in one of his most memorable Psalms writes, I'm asking God for one thing, only one thing, to live with him in his house my whole life long. I'll contemplate his beauty. I'll study at his feet. Psalm 27 and verse 4. Meditate for a moment on this expanded definition of beautiful. The quality attributed to what pleases or satisfies the senses. Having or possessing beauty. Qualities that, that are especially attractive. Synonyms include loveliness, elegance, magnificence, excellence, attraction, fascination, majesty, value, merit, worth, and allurement. Indeed, there is no single word or phrase in any definition of beautiful that cannot be applied to our Lord. Amen. Occupied with Jesus. Few historic church leaders have fascinated me, Dick Eastman writes, as much in their radical devotion to Christ as has Francis of Assisi, born the son of a wealthy, intelligent, uh, I'm sorry, a wealthy Italian merchant, I'm sure they were intelligent, um, in the late 12th century and living only 44 years, Francis forsook all his inheritance at the age of 27 and founded what would become the Franciscan Order. This humble Italian friar left such a legacy that generations would know him simply by the city of his birth as Francis of Assisi. What most marked Assisi's life was his pure passion for Jesus. He was consumed with the beauty of Christ. Such was evident when he wrote to his fellow Franciscans about his beautiful Savior. We should wish for nothing else and have no other desire. We should find no pleasure or delight in anything except in our Creator, Redeemer, and Savior. He alone is true God. Oh, I'm sorry. He alone is true God, perfect, good, all good, every good, and the true and supreme good, loving and gentle, kind and understanding. Amen. In the same discourse, Francis elaborated, nothing then must keep us back. Nothing separate us from him. Nothing come between us and him. At all times and seasons, in every 
country and place, every day and all day, we must keep him in our hearts. Where we must love, honor, adore, serve, praise and bless, glorify and acclaim, magnify and think the most high, supreme, and eternal God. I'm sorry, thank the most high, supreme, and eternal God, creator of all and the Savior, lovable, delightful, and utterly desirable beyond all else forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Boy, St. Francis surely had a love for Jesus. Amen? Praise God. Thomas of Solano, a fellow Franciscan and poet, said of Francis, he was always occupied with Jesus. Jesus he bore in his heart. Jesus in his mouth. Jesus in his ears. Jesus in his eyes. Jesus in his hands. Jesus in the rest of his members. Praise the Lord. Amen. Have you ever read the account of a past faith giant and said silently, I want that. I really want that. That's what I feel when I read accounts of Christ seekers like Francis of Assisi. The Apostle Paul captured the same intensity. He summed up his entire reason for being with these words, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. It's Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. Take time today and every day sitting at the feet of Jesus, basking in his beauty. Praise the Lord. You know, no one loves us more than Jesus. And he loves us so much, he wants our love for him to be the same in return. One of the things that he was uh, grieved about with one of the seven churches in the book of Revelation is that they had lost their first love. They were doing all kinds of wonderful things for Jesus. We can, if you read, uh, read uh, that account, and I can't remember the church uh, that, uh, that was referenced, but you can read that for yourself in, in uh, Revelation uh, chapter 3, I believe it is. And the thing that he had against, and they were so many, doing so many wonderful things, but they lost their first love. Jesus loves us so much. Let's take time with him every day to remember his love for us and, and just love him back. Amen. And uh, this is a prayer uh, today. And uh, I'm going to read this. And if, and if you just want to close your eyes and listen and, and pray along. <clears throat> Beautiful Jesus, I want to spend my life captivated by your beauty. You are truly beautiful in every way. And your beauty resonates throughout all creation. Everything about you is beautiful. Everything you do is beautiful. Everything you create is beautiful. Everything you say is beautiful. Today I call to mind specific and personal encounters with your beauty, that I may meditate on the ways you have revealed your beauty uniquely to me in the past. I thank, I thank you for the beauty with which you have flooded my life, all of it is yours. May I always truly abound in your beauty. Amen. Amen. And uh, Dick Eastman, in every chapter, he has an encountering the beautiful Jesus uh, or a practical application. And um, number one, explore. Take time to meditate on this quality of Christ. Use scriptures in this chapter to get started. Uh, number two, experience. Turn your meditation into prayer that this quality might impact your life today. Pray the above prayer to begin. Uh, number three, express. Uh, during your quiet time, take a moment to journal your thoughts, even if briefly. Number four, exalt. Pray, praise, or even spontaneously sing your way through today's list of the names of Jesus. It only requires a few minutes. And um, this is Dick Eastman's, and I, th I think he had said he, he uh, cataloged 800-some uh, list of, 800-long uh, uh, list of um, uh, names that he gathered out of scriptures about Jesus. 
and uh, this is glorify his name. Therefore, I will praise you among the nations, O Lord. I will sing praises to your name. This is Psalm 18 and verse 49. And this is a, a, a list beginning in B's. Brightness of his glory. That's Hebrews 1 and verse 3. Brilliant Lord, Psalm 8 and verse 1. Bringer of peace, Ephesians 2, 14. Builder of everything, Hebrews 3 and verse 4. Capstone, Psalm 8, 118, 22. Captain of our salvation, Hebrews 2 and verse 10. Captain of the host of the Lord, Joshua 5, 14. Castle in which I live, Psalm 18 and verse 1. Catalyst of a better covenant, Hebrews 8, 6. Cave to hide in, Psalm 31, 5. And sometimes we need to hide in the Lord, don't we? Life gets difficult. Cave to hide in, I like that. Centerpiece of everything, Hebrews 3 and verse 4. Champion defender, Psalm 62, 2. Champion friend to widows, Psalm 68, 5. Champion who initiates and perfects our faith, Hebrews 12 and verse 2. Chief among 10,000, Song of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 10. Chief cornerstone, Psalm 118, 22. Chief foundation stone, 1 Peter 2, 6. Chief Shepherd, 1 Peter in chapter 5 and verse 4. Chosen One, Luke 23 and verse 35. Christ, the power of God, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 24. Christ, who is your life, Colossians 3 and verse 4. Cliff to climb, Psalm 31, 5. Cloud enthroned, uh, Revelation 14 and verse 14. Cloud Rider, Psalm 68, 4. Commander, Isaiah 55, 4. Compassionate God, Deuteronomy 4 and verse 31. Compassionate One, Isaiah 49, 10. Conclusion, or the conclusion, amen. Revelation 21, 6. Consuming Fire, Hebrew 12 and verse 29. Cornerstone in the place of honor, 1 Peter 2 and verse 6, and cornerstone in Zion, 1 Peter 2 and verse 6. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm glad you uh, joined us today, and uh, I hope that you can tune in tomorrow. Actually, uh, we're not going to be uh, having the 930 devotional, but tomorrow is Wednesday. And so at 7 o'clock, we're going to be having our regular service time and continue uh, focusing with this uh, week of prayer and going through uh, Dick Eastman's uh, book, uh, Awesome. And, um, but let's, uh, I would like to say a prayer for you and uh, pray that God will bless uh, your prayer time today and, uh, and also your, the rest of your day. Let's, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this time we had together re reading uh, Dick Eastman's book. And Lord, I pray that this would just be a stirring, Lord, a, uh, a tool to stir our hearts, Jesus, to meditate on you. Lord, not just, not just setting aside personal time uh, to, to get on our knees or just get into a quiet place and to pray. But Lord, to think about you, Lord, throughout the day, the day. Lord, to see you shining through your creation. Lord, to see you and how beautiful you really are. Lord, <clears throat> there's, a, uh, there's a song that says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Heavenly Father, help us to keep our thoughts and to keep our eyes fixed on how beautiful and wonderful, awesome, and supreme Jesus is. Lord, I thank you for those who uh, joined us today and, and, uh, or maybe will join online later. God, I pray your blessing on them. Lord, I pray that you would uh, bless them in their health. Lord, bless them with peace. Bless them with safety. Lord, bless them with that assurance and just that knowing that, Lord, you are faithful and you are with them through thick and thin and you are dependable. For Jesus, you are faithful. Lord, we love you and we give you praise. 
And uh, for this wonderful, glorious day you've given us in your wonderful name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.